Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at the energy stored by an inductor for inductors and DC circuits. So let's get into it. Now, just like capacitors can store energy on the capacitor plates, we can say that inductors can also store energy. But inductors don't have anything to do with charge, so we can't talk about charge when we're talking about inductors. However, it's the case that energy is stored in the magnetic field around the current carrying inductor. This is because work must have been done to set up the magnetic field in the first place. Energy is built up as the current rises through the inductor and is fed back into the inductor as the current decreases. The energy stored in an inductor is given by this equation here which you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam, E equals a half Li squared, where E is the energy stored measured in joules, L is the inductance of the inductor measured in henrys, and I is the steady current measured in amperes. And a very important thing to be aware of is when you're using inductors, when an inductor is suddenly turned off, for example by opening the switch in an inductive circuit, the magnetic field rapidly collapses, producing a large back EMF. This large back EMF can create a spark across the open contacts of the switch. The energy required to create the spark comes from the magnetic field itself. So if you're doing an experiment with this, you'd want to make sure that you turn off the power supply at the same time so as to not damage anything. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to let you see another application of this. So if you have a look at this basic inductive circuit, we've got a switch, a 1.5 volt battery, an inductor with an iron core, and a neon lamp. And the inductor and the neon lamp are in parallel. So the idea here is that we want to try and power this neon lamp. But you'll see here it says that the neon lamp requires about 80 volts to light it. So when we close the switch, we're not going to have enough voltage across the neon lamp to light the lamp because when we close the switch, we only have 1.5 volts maximum across the inductor from the supply voltage. And that means we also only have 1.5 volt maximum across the neon lamp. And when the switch is closed and there's a current flowing through the inductor, it will have a magnetic field around it in which the energy will be stored. However, when we open the switch, there should be a large rate of change of current and the magnetic field around the inductor should rapidly decay which should release that energy in the form of a large back EMF produced and this should allow the neon lamp to flash. So just to show you this, you'll see that we get a large flash there. So close the switch, nothing happens because there's not a high enough voltage to be across the neon lamp for it to light. But when we open the switch, there's a large flash from the neon lamp because the voltage across it is now high enough due to the large back EMF produced when the magnetic field collapsed due to opening the switch. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.